Okay. Welcome back to Nick Lane. This comic corner classic has known classic. This is episode number thirteen hundred and thirty uh, forty one and double shot number twelve hundred and thirty five. I have two Marvel trades. First is a mini well trade collecting a mini series. This is War of the Realms, The Punisher. This collects the initial three issue mini series. A long material from War of the Realms Omega number one, which is a the mini series game draft this one. And War of the Realms War Scrolls number three. Which doesn't really focus on Punisher at all. Yeah, the whole point of the War of the Realms Punisher mini series is to explain what the heck the Punisher was up to during all the during the whole craziness that was War of the Realms. What was he up to? Fighting frost giants, trolls, and basically being uh, basically be a protector and he basically also was protecting some civilians which is quite interesting for him to do and let's see what else oh yes he also started a feud with a frost giant who later appeared in the follow-up series Punisher Kill Crew yeah this will be interesting though you have a mini series like this up another mini series now this is one of two that did this the other was I kid you not basically War of the Realms Ages of Atlas. That one also set up a miniseries as well, which set up another miniseries. Yep. This miniseries was just pure fun, and plus, love the classic logo on the cover. That's purely fantastic. Now, I thought maybe this was published after the initial ongoing series ended in late 2019. No. I looked at the release date for this one. This was released back in April of 2019, and probably concluded in June. Yep. Of course, Omega sets up Punisher Kill Crew, which was a really good mini series. Now, this full book is written by Gary Duggan. Yep, Gary Duggan. You might thinking, Gary Duggan writing The Punisher? That's a bit unusual for him. Yes, he also writes a short story from, from War Realms Omega. And then we have two short stories from War Realms War Scrolls, number three. You have Doctor Doom in. A Rose for Victor from Christopher Conswell and art by Clan Tamari. She-Hulk, yes, a She-Hulk story. Basically explain what the heck she was up to. She was even free to for, for a short story, which is quite nice. Doc Doom basically has some fun doing his story. Done by Clara Jen Ambers and artwork by Simon DeRusha. Now, Duggan does do the artwork for uh, writing for the Punch Mini series with Marco Ferrura on the artwork for that one. For War Orphans, it's Juan Ferreira. Yep. Absolute great stuff here. Like, here's him basically using a... Like a big elephant gun to basically take out a freaking frost giant. So you want Punisher as, as awesomeness during during the awesomeness that was War of the Realms? This is basically your ticket for. This is an absolute great miniseries. And... The stuff basically here. The She-Hulk story is quite interesting. It's basically... Oh yeah, and by the way, in, in the actual story itself, does, you're probably asking, does She-Hulk mention to Freya that she's dating her son? Yes. Yes, she does. And Freya's got no problem with that at all. She basically is very proven in a relationship. Despite the fact there is another woman in love with Thor. Yes, Roz Solomon. Who apparently Thor, despite the fact, came by her... It seems like he was not very interested much in, in starting a relationship with her due to her killing a lot of trolls and her basically enjoying it. Doctor one is okay at best, but the best thing here is Punisher. Yeah, good this book. 9 out of 10, great book. Not so good with this one. We have more X-Force. Let me go get the other book. Because, well, this is the end of this run. Yeah. Where did I put this damn thing? Is it here? Where did I put it? Nope, that's not it. Where did I put this on? Yes, 
excuse me. Sorry about that. I had to go get it. The uh, other book itself. Mm. Yeah, my thing fell off when I got up. Yeah, I should have taken care of this before I started this, but here you go. Alright, next book is the final book for X-Force Volume... This is X-Force Volume 2, The Counts of a King. This collects issues 6 through 10 of X-Force Volume 5. Yep, this is the end of this thing. Mm -hmm. Now, Stubberman Bronson... And the thing is, the first issue artwork in the publishing trade is really good artwork. It's done by Damon Carito. This is actually pretty good artwork. I like this artwork. It's actually really, really good. And I kind of wish that this artist would have stayed. Compared to the next issue's artwork. Oh, good God. It's like this art just had to come back for some reason. Because look, it's the bad artwork from the start of the series. Is back. For the last four issues of this run. Yeah, so Continue was basically dealing with strife in here. Though for some reason when he takes off his helmet, he basically has the face of the young Cable, which... That makes no sense. Like, why in the world would Cable have the same... Now, Cable is... Now, Strife is known for having the same face as Cable. But why wouldn't this Strife look like the regular Strife that Rob Liefeld created? This is probably a complete different strife. Probably got a similar idea. Oh, let's have a kid cable. Let's have a kid strife for some reason. Though, I still don't like the fact that apparently Domino is not the mutant liberty shamer is. That's why I think they have bomb in the past. And they pretty much deal with Ahab. I think Rachel is free. She's mostly been restored by the very end of this book. And also, you have Cable make out with a red-headed woman. No, it's not his sister. No, it's some other redheaded woman he knows. And Ahab is kind of, they kind of resolve his plot thread here, where they pretty much restore uh, one of his hounds to him, not Rachel Gray, mind you. And the book just ends with him basically going to another time period. And that's the book ends. I'm like, okay, I only got this because I like X-Force. Now, Bronson himself, Ed Bronson, is definitely a good writer. This is not one of his best works that he's done. No. It just feels okay. And my guess is he probably felt a little bit frustrated with basically how... Because he probably heard the book was going to end after 10 issues. I'm sure he was actually planning this book had to last a little bit longer. But nope, 10 issues. That was basically it. Well, I'm going to get the book roughly 8.5 out of 10. It's an okay end to this run. It had a good start to it, yes. Now, the thing with this book is, by the way, back cover. Clear homage to Uncanny X-100. Now, my final thoughts of this run, of this run for X-Force. Excuse me. My initial problem with this book, and probably the reason why Marvel decided to just end this one when it did... Is because of the terrible, because the book was basically not selling too well. I mean, Uncanny X Men sold up probably a lot better than this book did. And it was awesome though when they brought this book back in 2018. They basically gave X Force back its classic 90s logo. That's purely awesomeness. But here's a question for you like, who is worst at drawing artwork? Rob Liefeld or the artist they have in here? Because. Yes, we had to have really bad artwork in here. That was, in my opinion, the worst problem with this book. Was the artwork. The fact that they changed it from the bad artwork after four issues to a good artist. Who will stay for issue five and six. And then right back to the crappy artwork again. Yes. Yeah, for some reason. Now, it looks like the, the artwork is a little better throughout the end of the run. But my gosh. This artwork also... Yeah, we have this thing in here about this girl being infected with a techno-organic virus, which they think Cable was infected with. Yes. Okay, we kind of resolved that. And, by the way, the general himself is not killed by the end of this run. I would have thought, though, 
that basically when this book ended, they would have killed off that general because it's clearly a spirit of that era stuff. No, this is not the same general who appears in Kenny Dexter by Rosberg. This is a completely different guy. And they mentioned what happened with Richter in the final issue, where in the final issue of Matthew Rosberg, Rome Richter died. But don't worry, Richter's alive and well. Because anybody previously died, with the exception of about two people, by the way, with the exception of Multiple Man, well, the one that Rosberg created, who got killed for the end of his book, and Destiny, who's somehow dead again, that's why I think she's alive. I don't really understand that. Now, when the book was relaunched, now, with the exception of Domino, most of the lineup basically for this book, which basically consisted of, well, the lineup itself never really changed very much. I mean, it's simply put a tribute to the 90s lineup, which I think is great. I thought that was really good. Now, if you think of the writing for this book, like this book here, good writing. This book here fell a bit step down. Yes, but a bit of a step down from the really good writing that this book had when the book started. And if you're curious though, like, what has Ed Bronson done since the end of this book? Well, I believe he popped up, I believe he did, like, the five, I think he worked on that miniseries Wolverine Red, uh, Black, Red, and Blood. Yeah, that was one of those two miniseries down along with Carnage. He was working on that with Matthew Rosberg and Kelly Thompson. I think that was his most recent book, I think, if he worked on. But aside from that, I don't think he's done anything lately. The guy himself is a good writer, it's just that Marvel doesn't get a lot of stuff to do. I mean, when you think of, like, the first book he did for Marvel, one of the earliest books I can think of is, is basically Iron Fist. His run for Iron Fist was fantastic. I love that run. may not have been a long run, but it was really good. This book's a little shorter than that. Now, excuse me. What happened to these characters afterwards? Well... Cable himself would not be part of the relaunch line after this. Oh no, he got his own spinoff book as Cable. Yes, the Kid Cable did. Which also brought about the return of the future Cable. They mentioned that the reason why he killed off the old man Cable at the start of extermination was because the guy had given up his mission to preserve a timeline. That's the reason why he killed him. Even though that Bronson wrote, oh yeah, you were just getting too old. Same guy, and yet he wrecked kind of something he did. Yes. Now, Warpath himself, I think he's part of the current lineup right now. I have looked up a little later. I know Domino is. Yeah, he's he's she's there because it's X Force. She's always associated with X Force. I think like the only X Force book she's not been in is Uncanny X Force. Yet for some reason she was not associated with that one for some reason. She was part of X Force Line Three by Chris Jones and Craig Kyle, but Uncanny X Force. It's like she stayed clear away from that book for some reason. Though, it's great, though, that Ed Bronson brought her back to the book because of past history with X-Force. Warpath and Boom Boom, same thing. I think Boom Boom is also part of the current X-Force team, which also includes Jean Grey and Beast. Which I'm also glad that Wolverine rejoined the roster, which I believe he's the lead of the group. Now, the X-Force book itself is not written by Ed Bronson. Nope, it's written by... I believe it's Ben Percy. Yes, Ben Percy writes that book. While Cable is written by Gary Duggan. Which, it's a good book. It has the same, basically, creative team about the book's run so far. And X-Force has been excellent so far. It's actually one of a few books actually has been consistent throughout the entirety of the first, like, year that's been out. The only book that has not felt that way is Excalibur. I mean, X -Men, the current X-Men book, basically doing really well. X Force is doing really well too. And this is surprising though that this is actually one of two ongoing series published after Extermination. The other course being Kenny X Men. And for some reason, when Marvel's had to relaunch, basically, this book and Kenny X Men, X Men, Kenny X Men is simply X Men. And this launch the one they included Deadpool as part of this relaunch for some reason. I don't know why, but they did. And the book itself didn't last very long, it lasted 10 issues. Before abruptly ending. I will discuss basically the ending of that book. When an X-Ray comes out. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I was enjoying talking about X-Force. Now am I planning on getting any more X-Force? Yes. 
I am planning on getting the rest of the Sam Humphreys run for the book for Kenny X Men. As for Cable and X Force, I have not decided if I want to get that yet. I am planning on getting the Science Spurrier run. Mm hmm. Yes. I think it was great. Marvel brought back X Force. It just, I kind of felt this though, maybe that Ed Bronson should basically give him time what he wanted to do with the book instead of having the book abruptly end with 10 issues. And Marvel, when, when they brought this book back in late 2018, they, they gave it a Marvel legacy numbering of 230. Now, like other. Marvel Legacy books. Now, that was basically part of the Doom number, which they still brought, which still continue, like, a lot of the books, like Avengers. Basically, a lot, almost all the books in right now, with the exception of the X books. I would say X-Men, the current X book, basically did just for the first issue, and then right after that, they dropped that numbering. And that was the only book they did that for, for a while. And then, now, Wolverine is apparently doing it now, because recently, uh, just, it, just like last year, I actually think which is this year they celebrate 350 issues of Wolverine, which I think is great. But aside from Wolverine, there's like no other X-Men books basically doing it now where they have that triple digit numbering. I kind of wish Marvel would have explained exactly what makes up the numbering for X-Force. Like, the only thing I could think of, I mean, the original 20th issue volume, that's probably included. This actually mini-series, I would say volume 3 is included. Maybe the two volumes of Kenny X-Force is included. K uh, Cable and X-Force. And maybe X-Force Volume 3. Volume 3, 4. But unlike the other books where Marvel had their, their, their Marvel Legacy numbering four years ago, this book, along with Spider-Woman, which celebrated its 100th issue just last year, they never bothered to explain exactly what issues make up the numbering. It took a guy online to basically add up what exactly included part of that numbering. This book, you have to be a guessing game. Because it just seemed, just seemed to make much sense that Marvel basically would have these numbering and you probably think, maybe the back of the book did I explain it. No, they don't. They clearly do not explain what the heck makes up the numbering for these damn books. I kind of wish they would do that. Because I like the old numbering. And I kind of wish to give an explanation for it, but they don't. Yep, so yeah, that's it for Circle of View. Stay tuned for my next video, which will be Quintessa Quintuplets. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.